If you watch my channel, you know I recently reviewed the Samsung Galaxy Book 2. I really like that 2-in-1 because it had a gorgeous Super AMOLED display, surface-like form factor with a kickstand. I like the epic battery life that it got and improved performance out of that Snapdragon 850. Windows and ARM was on its way. So I was curious to see what Lenovo had to offer when it announced and released the Lenovo Yoga C630. I got my hands on it. I've been putting it through its paces for the last couple of weeks, and here's my take on it. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my unboxing and review of the Lenovo Yoga C630. Coming up. Want to see more videos like this? Well, why not hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification icon. This way you'll be alerted every time I post a new video. And don't forget to check me out on my social media, especially Twitter, because that's where I post all the latest updates. Now, you could probably pick this up on sale at some point. In fact, Lenovo's running a sale right now. The entry-level model with 4 gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of onboard storage is currently going for around $773. That's normally $860. Now, the 8 gigabyte model with 256 gigabytes of SSD storage, that goes for right now for $899. That's the model I would choose because of that extra RAM, which has definitely helped with multitasking on this device. So that's the one I would go with. Now here's a quick rundown of the specs. You get a 13.3 inch IPS Full HD display. It's powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 850 processor. And unlike the Galaxy Book 2, which we just took a look at, this does have eight gigabytes of RAM, up to 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. And of course it has built in LTE. There's no storage expansion. There is no micro SD card slot. So keep that in mind. It comes in a small package. You're looking at 2.6 pounds or 1.2 kilograms. And it's a very thin and mobile device. Great for the executive who does a lot of traveling as well as a student who needs something thin and light to take with him to class. This is a really nice sleek package. And of course, having always on connected LTE means you're going to have internet access pretty much anywhere and everywhere. I love that. But enough with the specs, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Lifting the lid, you're greeted by the unit itself. It comes with a cloth protective covering. That's a nice touch. It has a 45 watt adapter. It's USB-C, it's pretty compact, and you get an extension cable. Now holding the unit for the first time, you realize this is a really nice looking device, very thin and light, and I like the iron gray color. And as far as ports are concerned, on the left side is your SIM tray, which houses your Nano LTE SIM, as well as a USB-C port. Moving over to the right side is your power button, a 3.5 millimeter headset jack, and a second USB-C port. Now I'm using mine with Verizon. The LTE is very good. I'm getting really good uploads and downloads. I like the fact that the power button lights up, letting you know the device is powered on and it's charging. And it has a fingerprint sensor right below the keyboard on the right side. Great for Windows Hello login. Setup was easy and registered my finger pretty much every time I used it. Now when it comes to the display, you're looking at a 13.3 inch IPS Full HD display. That's a resolution of 1920 by 1080. It's a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Now it's not the brightest display at 238 nits, and it's certainly not as bright as the Galaxy Book 2 or the Surface Pro 6 as you can see. But it's still bright enough for indoor use nonetheless. It's just not going to be great for outdoor use, so just keep that in mind. But it does cover the colored gamut really well at 120% sRGB, which is really good. Not quite as good as the Galaxy Book 2 or the Surface Pro 6, but good in its own right. But you do get some very deep blacks, some really vibrant colors, although I notice this panel's a bit on the cool side, but I do like the fact that it does have some pretty thin bezels on the side and even on the top, despite having your camera or your webcam there. Now you also get a bit of a chin on the bottom, but not as bad as some of the other convertible yoga devices we've seen recently. This is a very solid full HD panel, although I wish it was a bit brighter, it is a good full HD panel nonetheless. And it does have pen support, although you will have to buy it as a separate accessory. Lenovo does offer it for sale. They don't include it in the box, which is a little bit of a shame as the Galaxy Book 2, which we just took a look at, does include the pen at the $999 price point. Here, they don't include the pen. But having said that, it's the same technology as a Surface Pen, so I was able to use it with my original Surface Pen, as you see here, and it worked okay. I, I'm not going to say this is the best inking experience, because it's not, but it is definitely good enough to take some notes in a classroom or in a meeting or to sketch out some artwork here and there. 
And of course, this being a convertible laptop, you can put it into the different modes. Tent mode is great for consuming media, recipes in the kitchen. The same could be said for the stand mode. I love using that for Netflix and YouTube. And of course, you can put it into the tablet mode. Great for use with the pen. And it's particularly good for surfing the internet on your sofa. That's pretty good. But to be honest, most of the time, I prefer laptop mode. How about you? Let me know in the comment section below. The hinges are metal, they're very sturdy, and I like the Lenovo branding on the left hinge. That looks pretty cool in my opinion. But you will notice some screen wobble in laptop mode when you're using the touch display with the pen or with your finger. So that's something to keep in mind, but that's typical of yoga devices. Now the key travel on this is very shallow. I saw other reviewers knocking it for it because it only has 0.9 millimeters of key travel, but I actually like this keyboard. In fact, I like it a lot. It does have pretty good tactile feedback. I thought they were spaced out really nice. And remember, this is a very thin and light device. So putting a pretty decent keyboard is a tough job to do. And I thought they did a good job. Now I really like the fact that this has two levels of backlighting, great for in a dimly lit environment or a dark environment where you can get work done despite not having the proper lighting. That's pretty good. The large glass touchpad was actually pretty responsive. Two finger scrolling was a pleasure. Windows 10 gestures worked as advertised. Pinch to zoom worked well. Everything you'd want in a touchpad is there. They did a good job on this touchpad. So this is the front facing camera on the Lenovo Yoga 630. It's a 720p, 30 frames per second. Nothing special here, but it will definitely get the job done. You wanna do some Skype, you wanna do some video conferencing. This certainly will do the job. I want to know what you think about it. Let me know in that comment section below. Now, I'm sure you're wondering about performance. Well, it's very similar to that of the Samsung Galaxy Book 2, which I recently reviewed. And as you can see from these results, it's better than the initial offerings that HP had as well as Lenovo had earlier in 2018, where I reviewed those, they were lacking in performance. But here, as you can see, it's an equivalent, in my opinion, to a Core i5 7th generation Intel processor. And that to me is good, especially when you want a thin and light travel device like this. But let's be clear, you're not going to be doing any AAA gaming, you're not going to be doing any 4K video editing on this device. That's not what this device was designed for. But I think you already know that. But I just wanted to reiterate that because I get a lot of comments, especially in my Samsung Galaxy Book 2 video, where can we do all kinds of things that this really was not designed to do. So please keep that in mind. Now, one of the benefits of running a mobile processor such as a Snapdragon 850, really good thermals under heavy load. Check this out. Only the bottom got above 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 33 degrees Celsius, and it was really cool. Very good job in terms of the thermals on this device. And also keep in mind, this is a fanless design, of course, so you won't have to compete with any fan noise. And that's pretty good. And I want to clear up another area of confusion. This is a 64-bit operating system. This is not a 32-bit operating system. You can run 64-bit Windows Store apps. Let's be clear about that. And for now, you can't run non-Windows Store 64-bit apps. That may change with an update from Microsoft later on. I don't know when, but hopefully soon. So let's just clear up that myth. And let's clear up something else. This has eight gigabytes of RAM, 7.64 gigabytes are available or usable. And so Samsung could have put in eight gigabytes of RAM in the Galaxy Book 2 if it wanted to. It was not limited by the operating system. It is a 64-bit operating system, so they were not limited by that. So I just wanted to clear that up. Now I want you to address something else. Out of the box, this comes with Windows 10 in S mode. Now I have no use for S mode because I use Google Chrome in all my devices. So I have to be able to have Google Chrome on that. In order to do that, I had to switch this out of S mode into Windows 10 Home. And I think most people will use this device with Windows 10 Home. S mode is really not for me. It may be for some, but I can't use it simply because I need to be able to use certain apps that are just not available in S mode. So just keep that in mind. Now, when it comes to battery life, this thing is off the charts. This is definitely the star of the show. Now, I ran two battery tests on this device. The first one being the continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. Now, it did really well, 12 hours and 46 minutes, beating out the Microsoft Surface Pro 6 handily. And of course, the Samsung Galaxy Book 2, which I just reviewed, it also beat that. So you're looking at some really excellent battery life. This is certainly a device to go to if you're a road warrior. 
And the second battery test that I ran is the 1080p movie playback test at 200 nits and here's how it did. 18 hours and 46 minutes, which is simply phenomenal. Beating out the Microsoft Surface Pro 6, which did well in its own right, and the Samsung Galaxy Book 2. This thing is a battery beast for sure. Longevity is its calling card. But in the rare occasion that you do need to plug in, they do supply a 45 watt AC adapter, 30 minutes gives you 25%, one hour 45%, and two hours and 55 minutes for a full charge. Not the fastest, but it'll get the job done. The Yoga C630 sports two top firing speakers, one on each side of the keyboard, and to be honest, they're not the best. Especially when you're at 100% volume, there is a bit of distortion, it lacks bass, it's not the best. Now it gets somewhat loud, but I would prefer to use my Bluetooth headphones or wired headphones rather than rely on these speakers, but they can definitely get the job done. They're not the worst I've ever heard, but they're certainly not the best. Hopefully they'll do a better job on the next version. So to wrap it all up, can I recommend the Lenovo Yoga C630? And the answer is yes, I have no hesitation recommending this. Really nice convertible two-in-one design, comfortable keyboard, epic battery life. I can't stress that enough. 4G LTE with optional eSIM, and of course you can option it out to 8 gigabytes of RAM, which certainly helps with multitasking. But of course, this is not a perfect convertible laptop. Lenovo has room for improvement. I think they can put a brighter display in this. I felt it was a little bit too dim for my liking. The inking experience wasn't great, it was so-so, and the speakers were subpar, finding that it had distortion at 100% volume. I think they can do better in the next version. But if you're the business executive of the Road Warrior who needs always on connected LTE with epic battery life, this is your ticket. I'm gonna give it a score of 82%, making the Lenovo Yoga C630 worth your money. So what do you think about the Lenovo Yoga C630? I really like this. This is the new battery beast, ladies and gentlemen. Longevity with this is what you're gonna get. Always on connected LTE. The downsides with this are it's not going to have as nice a display as, say, something like the Galaxy Book 2. This is a shade below that, obviously. It has an IPS display. It's not an AMOLED display. This doesn't get as bright. In fact, this is probably one of the biggest negatives I have about it. I wish the screen was brighter, but it was good nonetheless. It's definitely good for indoor use. Outdoor, direct sunlight, you may have some issues. But if you need something that will last you across Atlantic flight, if you need to go a couple of days between charges, if if you need to be always on connected LTE, this thing is the battery king. Now I tried to kill this a number of times. It took me a really long time to burn down that battery and that says a lot. And I worked it really hard, full brightness, you name it. I threw it at it, it kept going and going and going. So this thing is pretty amazing in terms of longevity. Snapdragon 850 is working fine for the kinds of tasks that I threw at it. Remember, you're not gonna do any AAA gaming on this. You're not gonna be editing 4K videos on this. You're gonna be limited to 32-bit apps, at least for non-Windows Store apps. Hopefully with updates coming, they will enable 64-bit apps. That's something we're hoping will come down the road from Microsoft, but again, this thing, if you know how to use this device and if you use it in the right use case scenario, is a pretty amazing device. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, on Twitter. Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.